Hey guys, Cody with World of May Warcraft. Today, going to be building an army. What I'm gonna do is spend most of the day, or the entire day today, working on my Zosk Dynasty Necrons. For those of you that don't know, the Necrons were my first army, and uh, since then I've started collecting a couple others, so I sparsely paint here and there uh, some of this and some of that. And uh, it kind of stinks because when I want to play a bigger point army, I don't have a fully painted force to play against someone. So I want to buckle down today and over the next few days and fully paint the Necrons that I have and maybe buy more and paint those. And I'll run you through the process of what I do for my Zosk Dynasty Red Necrons. So, hmm, how should I start? Um, well, I suppose I'm going to be building an army. Gonna need So I start, of course, in the building process, as anyone would, with some models. So I actually got some extra immortals, because <clears throat> I needed some to finish out a unit. Let's get started building some immortals. My five immortals built with their uh, gauze blasters. It's time to prime. What I like to do is use the old prime stick. So, I took my painting stick, which is, as you can see, a toy lightsaber, and I used double. Well, it's not really double sided tape, it's more like uh, a tacky putty, or what they call poster putty. And I stick it along the edge of my lightsaber here, put the painted models all along the edge. I have my Mephiston Red Primer, and that is the primary color of my Zox Dynasty Necrons, it is red. Uh, whole story written about it. I'll probably be posting with this video or in another one uh, the history of the Zosk dynasty. So. I'm 
all done. Put the base coat spread. So can still have uh, paint in my can. Make sure to always tip it upside down, like so. And spray it until paint doesn't come out anymore. That way it doesn't clog up the nozzle. Now I have the base coat on all my guys. The immortals here. Uh, and I'll start laying down the second primary color. So now, for painting, I have my base coated in the Fiston Red Immortals. Got my station set up all here, water, paper towel, brushes that I need, and the colors that I need. Mainly, I'm going to be using my Fiston Red, Null Oil as my shade, Lead Belcher as the second primary color with that Mephiston Red, Rune Fang Steel to highlight that, uh, to highlight the lead belcher after uh, shading. Then I get uh, XV88, which I put on the base over the rocks as dry brushing. And I use these three colors over here, the orange, yellow, and white, for the electrical effect on the weapons. So, with that, let's get into it. For now, step two is complete. I lay down the second primary color, Lead Belcher. And since this is the first immortal I'm doing, I just kinda, as I go, uh, go with whatever I think looks good. Whatever I think, it should be metallic or metal, just like on my first warrior. I mean, I could throw them on a table like this, and it's at least more than some people have, but you'll see in a minute, after just by shading, and uh, highlighting how much that does with just a few simple so, colors. I spent all day today uh, building up this Necron Force. What I've done is I got those Immortals uh, all done with a secondary, their second primary color, which is the Lead Belcher Metallic. Uh, along with, I built a bunch of Warriors, primed them the same way I did the Immortals and uh, put the second primary color with the uh, lead belcher all over them. So now I have all of these dudes uh, put the basing material on all these models. And uh, what I use it for my Necrons is rocks uh, from the craft store. Um, and I preferably, I like to use super glue rather than tacky glue or white glue, PVA glue. I don't like to use that, I, at least for this. I do like to use it with Flock and with other models. Uh, I also really like the new uh, uh, technical paint that GW has that is the Cracked Earth. That works really cool. I've been doing that for my Dark Angel. But for my Necrons, I like to use Super Glue uh, because it holds a lot of rocks. I use Little Rocks so that it, uh, you know, so it kind of looks to scale like they're stepping on very small pebbles. So, I got all the models moved from here to there in my assembly line as I added glue and rocks 
to each and every single base. So now, time for base five. I'm gonna take null oil, my wash brush, and do an all over wash to every single one of these models. Give the paint a little shake, pop it open. And now I went from here to there in the first assembly line pass uh, with the rocks. And now I'll go from here back onto here and this assembly line pass. And by doing that, when I highlight, it gives it this old, uh, rustic look. Really, you know, gives it that feel of, uh, he's been in a tomb for 61 million years, which is what I'm going for. So now that I have all of these warriors in Immortal sh shaded with an all over wash, they have the rocks on the bottom, it's time to do have these warriors with the all over wash uh, with the null oil so they're really matte and dark and kind of corroded looking and essentially what I do now is almost like just not so much dry brushing but really highlighting so I take my fine detail brush just like I've been using this whole time take the lead belcher or the Mephiston red it doesn't really matter which one I start with but because I'm going to do it with both essentially I'm not thinning it down I'm not using it in medium I'm not even putting it on a palette just get a little on my brush I just so essentially the finished model is going to look something like that. Now that I have all of the uh, warriors here past stage six, which is highlighting the silver and the red and the rocks, putting that red rim around the bottom, I'm going to go into the final phase, phase seven, which is a final little detail that I do on all these warriors that really pulls the army together, gives it something unique, and uh, makes it look like I spent a long time on all these guys, even though. I'll it really goes by pretty quick. I set the Immortals off to the side over here because uh, I actually need to get these warriors done for a battle I'm going to be having in uh, just a couple hours. So I want to paint these uh, warriors up all finished and uh, along with the other stuff that I had finished uh, for the battle. And the Immortals I'll finish another time. But basically for this final step, I'm going to be doing an electrical effect. Aside from what I painted over the course of a few days, I also got all this extra stuff built. An arc, a doomsday arc, another monolith that I kind of customized, along with some lich guard and some wraiths, 
primed but not painted. The Zosk Dynasty. In the age of the Necrotyr, the Zosk Dynasty was one of the most powerful in the galaxy. And when the Catan came with promises of immortality, the Zosk were the first to go through the transformation. Pharaoh Kaz was a kind and compassionate leader that only cared for his people's life and wanted them to live forever in the grand kingdom he created on planet Zosk. The Zosk Dynasty was called upon, like all the dynasties, to fight with the Catan to destroy the old ones. But Kaz was not so sure of victory and did not want to risk his people's lives, even with living metal, soulless bodies. So when the time came, Zosk Dynasty didn't show. When the Necrons defeated the Old Ones, to cause his surprise, he knew that he would be shunned. But the Silent King made Kaz an offer. He let Kaz know of his plans to overthrow and capture the Star Gods, and ordered Kaz and his dynasty to head the attack on the Deceiver. The Pharaoh had no choice. Unfortunately, he could not deceive the Deceiver. And when the fight began, the reinforcements from the other dynasties never came. Payback for not fighting in the war in heaven. Though the Zosk were many, and against all odds, shattered the Star God's energy and captured it in the Entombment Obelisk. But before the Deceiver fell, he laid a curse on the Zosk dynasty. The Deceiver sent out a red energy across the world of Zosk and cursed them with his rage at their betrayal. This Catan rage that now embodied all of the Zosk Necrons would never let them rest. They were all permanently blinded by fury. And so the never-ending march began, when the Silent King laid all Necrons in tombs to prepare for 60 million years. The Zosk never rested. Instead they fought all races throughout the galaxy. The second part of the curse the glowing red energy of all the Zosk Necrons make each of them like walking nerves. They feel every bolted glass and rending claw at a hundred times the normal pain. It's unbearable. But the rage forces them to fight, but never die. Every Zosk Necron gets back up. No matter how badly they want to die, just to make the endless pain stop they can. Cursed to come back forever and feel the excruciating pain of millions of years. With nothing but the mindless and blind rage forcing them to continue moving, continue fighting, and continue suffering.